Welcome to Marine Science, Introduction to Marine Science Unit 1. In here we'll have four lectures. Uh, our first lecture will talk about uh, discussion and introduction to marine science. Lecture 2 will be the scientific method. Lecture 3 will be the history of marine science. And lecture, lecture 4 will conclude with Unit 1 with an introduction to marine science technology. Introduction to marine science. What is marine science? Well, if we define marine science, it is a branch of the earth sciences that studies the ocean biome. Um, other earth sciences include astronomy, uh, geology, meteorology, and then of course oceanography. Marine science is also known as oceanography. It is an interdisciplinary science. And an interdisciplinary science means that it incorporates many other disciplines. So marine science uses all disciplines of science, such as biology, the earth and uh, earth sciences. So geology plays a role, um, definitely. Uh, oceanography is in there because it is the ocean biome. You also have the physical science, so we'll look at uh, physical concepts such as physics and, and chemical oceanography as well. But in addition to that, then you could scope out of the sciences and, and you also look at the social sciences, so economics of the ocean, uh, politics of the ocean. So this is what truly makes marine science an interdisciplinary science. So topics to covered include geological oceanography, which will look at plate tectonics and geology of the seafloor. Uh, that would be bathymetry. Uh, then we'll look at chemical oceanography, and we'll study things such as density, temperature, pressure, salinity. Then we'll look at physical oceanography, which looks at currents, waves, tides, the mixing of the ocean. Uh, and then both of those play a role in the connections that the ocean has with our atmosphere. And then we'll look at biological oceanography, which studies ocean organisms and its ecosystems. And then lastly, we'll end the course with human use and environmental issues that affect the ocean today. And when we talk about human use, we'll look at uh, how we use it for both recreation, but more importantly, the resources we get out of that, out of the ocean, um, and then our impact on the ocean and its current state. So branches of marine science. Our first branch of marine science is geological oceanography. That will be our topic right after this. Geological oceanography, also known as marine geology, it studies the geology of the ocean floor, which is bathymetry. And it includes both plate tectonics and that geology of the ocean floor and we'll do some mapping activities, so on and so forth, and read some data online. As you can see here, are some pictures of uh, ocean floor geology. Then we'll dive into chemical oceanography, which is marine chemistry, and we'll study the chemistry of the ocean and its chemical interactions with the atmosphere, because the ocean and the atmosphere uh, do have very important interactions and affect what goes on here in land. In the diagram there, you could see a CTD rosette, um, conductivity, temperature, and density. And if you look at that, uh, you look at the uh, depth of pressure, the CTD rosette is an instrument used by chemical oceanographers to measure uh, those three parameters, conductivity, temperature, and depth. And then you could also use to measure fluorescence, dissolved oxygen, and other parameters of water samples at various steps. Physical oceanography studies ocean's physical attributes, including temperature salinity structure. And we'll look at a lab that focuses on temperature salinity and density, and then the mixing of all that via waves, tides, and currents. 
And then lastly, where we'll spend a big portion of our studies will be in biological oceanography, marine biology, which is the study of the plants, animals, and microbes of the oceans and their ecological interactions within the ocean. Here we'll also learn about different marine ecosystems, such as the ocean deep, tidal pool, pools, uh, um, coral reefs, so on and so forth. And there you can see our little buddy, and he is asking you, are you excited to learn more about me and my friends and the ocean environment in which we live? So I hope you are all ready to come on board and, and learn these things. So as we sum, sum up our, our studies, our different branches of marine science, I'd like you to start thinking about careers of marine science, and we'll do an in-class project focusing on careers in marine science. So you'll, you'll investigate a certain career in one of the four branches of marine science, whether it be biological oceanography, geological oceanography, chemical oceanography, or uh, physical oceanography. The next lecture would be the scientific method. Basically, science is a method used to learn about the universe. It must be based on observable and or measurable evidence. So we do not just base this on opinions. That's why the scientific method is designed to guard against bias. Science is not absolute truth, but it does provide us with the best explanation available based on the existing evidence. So things in science can change if new evidence comes out to support that change. So if we look here, we see two different versions of the scientific process. Um, you have your old school scientific method where you ask the question, do background research, construct a hypothesis, test your hypothesis by doing an experiment, analyze your data and draw conclusions, and then report your results, and then state whether your hypothesis was supported or rejected. And then we have the uh, newer inquiry approach to science education where we do the uh, gathering data, interpreting the data, then we look at exploration and discovery, we have community analysis and feedback, and benefit and outcomes. Our approach here in this course will be basically to ask the question and then look at these three different things investigate that question, so observe, experiment, research. We are then going to analyze our data, compare, interpret, and apply math skills, basically statistical, statistical skills, and then we are going to explain it. So explain how our research and our analysis supports or rejects our hypothesis, create models, and debate uh, what the outcome of our, our research is. So here's a little comic, you can read that uh, about bias. So basically in a scientific method, you do the objective would be the question you are trying to answer, then you do some background research on the objective, and then you start to develop your hypothesis, which is an educated guess about the objective. Uh, a key thing about a hypothesis is that it must be testable. So basically you write a hypothesis stating in some form or another, if I do this, then this will happen because, and then you use a prediction there. So examples, you could say if skin cancer is related to ultraviolet light, then people with a high exposure to UV light will have a higher frequency of skin cancer. There you have your two variables and your prediction in that testable hypothesis. And then for the second one there, you could see if leaf color change is related to temperature, then exposing plants to low temperatures will result in changes in leaf color. There you can see both the manipulated variable and the responding variable in those two hypotheses, along with the prediction, and both those hypotheses are testable because you're testing only one variable. So you need to be careful when you start to experiment and test your hypothesis. you need to pick what those variables are. And we have three variables to look at. We have the manipulative variable, which is the variable that is being tested uh, in the experiment. So it's the thing that the scientist or the researcher, you, is going to change. And then you have the responding variable, and the responding variable is the variable that is going to be measured or observed whether you collect qualitative data or quantitative data, 
within that experiment. The responding variable is going to change in accordance to what you have manipulated in the experiment. Other than the manipulated variable, everything else should be main, should remain constant. And this would be your, these other things would be your controlled variables. So th things that are kept constant in the experiment are the controlled variables. So if you are manipulating temperature in an aquatic ecosystem or in a, or in a, a controlled uh, marine system, then you would have to have light, pressure, uh, salinity, all those other factors be the same. There are basically two experimental types. You have the controlled experiment, and the controlled experiment is one in which you test only one variable, and that would be the manipulated variable. So the experimental group in a controlled experiment is treated with the independent variable or that manipulated variable. Your other group is the control group, and it's identical to the experimental group except for the independent variable. And the control group will be used for comparison to see if there's any significant difference between what you manipulated and what was not manipulated in the experiment. In, often in, in environmental and marine research or any sort of science, you don't always have the ability to do a controlled experiment. Often you can do natural experiments. So no control group, it's based on observations taken from the natural system. So here you can see two pictures. In a lab setting, controlled experiments are used more often, but if you're out doing research, especially uh, measuring population densities of, uh, of a sp specific coral species on the ocean floor, then you would have uh, not much control there. So that would be more of a natural type of experiment. Once we do our experiment and we collect some of our data, we have to do the data analysis. So that's when we organize our data to make those conclusions. You have both quantitative data, quantitative data is based on numbers, and then you have qualitative data, which is based on observations. So it's more of a descriptive nature. Data is commonly organized using tables and graphs, and the data then is interpreted using statistical analysis. So statistical analysis will help us further support or reject our hypothesis. And we will do all this in our, in our one introductory lab. Then finally, we draw our conclusions, determining whether the data supports the hypothesis. If the data does not support the hypothesis, then we say the hypothesis is rejected. And we could do uh, one of two things here. Uh, either way, knowledge is still gained, but we must then refine our hypothesis, uh, make it correct, so that when tested again, the data does support it. If we go through the experiment and after doing our data analysis, we have our data support the hypothesis, then we want to repeat the experiment to confirm that the experiment and the hypothesis truly support it. And then if through a second time that hypothesis support it, and through other supported hypotheses, we can start to develop a theory. And a theory is an analytical structure designed to explain a set of observations in scientific research. Um, some theories that you may be already familiar with are the cell theory, the Big Bang theory, um, theory of relativity. Lastly, once we have our information, we then go ahead and report our results, procedures, and conclusions. And this is important because it allows other scientists to verify your work and to build on what you have learned. And often these things are reporting in scientific papers and scientific journals which contain those papers, such as the Journal of Science, the Journal of Plankton Research, if you're talking about marine science, and you have the Journal of Nature. So here are our first two lectures. Please make sure you get these copied into your notebooks, have them copied into your notebooks, and we will discuss them in class and go over uh, this, uh, some experiments to further understand our, our uh, scientific method in marine science.